Hey guys, well next to me is the Arion Thinker SE. I'm going to give you a rundown on my first thoughts on getting this printer set up, using it, uh, some of the design choices they made, and let you know what I think about it. Are you ready? Here we go. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, first of all, my name is Paul. Welcome to my YouTube channel where Nerdy is Cool, where I talk about 3D printing, cosplay stuff, Stormtrooper suits, R2-D2s, droid building, you name it, I'm into it. That said, if you're not a subscriber, hit the button down below and become one. Don't want you to miss any of my videos. So I've got some notes here, and this is like my fifth take doing this video. The microphone gave a lot of issues last time around, so I'm hoping this take works. Okay, got a bunch of notes and let's talk about the printer first. This is a 300 by 300 by 400 uh, print volume printer. It's a 24 volt system. I think the exception of that is the part cooling fan. I believe that's five volts and that's pretty much the, <laughs> it's basically just like a CR10, TiVo Tornado, you know, those sort of things. Um, it uh, came to me from a friend of a friend. Uh, I was introduced to the gentleman who's a rep for uh, Ariat. They were looking for people to, to buy these printers, do a review and give some feedback. They offered a uh, coupon rebate uh, if I purchased one. Purchase price was $4.29. They credited me $90 towards my purchase so I could get that here a little bit cheaper and do these mini reviews. I'm gonna do a more detailed one as I do more prints. I've had this going for about a week now and I've really enjoyed it. But before I get ahead of myself, I'm gonna to stick to my notes. So the first thing that you would notice about this printer is how quiet it is. It has a Trinamic 2208 drivers and this thing is whisper quiet as it prints. The only thing you're going to hear is the fan on the hot end and if you happen to be next to the power supply you'll hear that exhaust fan there as well too. You've got you know the fan here and there's one under the uh, control box and of course the only thing you're hearing right now is the one on the hot end and the part cooling fan will kick on in the second layer. But if you're used to having a lot of uh, the older drivers, this machine is eerily quiet. A lot of us, when we get new printers, the first thing we want to do is we want to print the various upgrades that our printers will need. Things like bed leveling knobs, you know, strain relief for the heated bed and things like that. You don't have to do that with this printer. They've already done it. The bed knobs are already there. They come pre-attached. They they're really cool. They have uh, on them where it shows which direction to go up or down. And the bed strain relief is back there as well. So you don't have to worry about doing that. Unlike the CR10, TiVo Tornado, and those older printers, the control box is all built in right here. Uh, it's on the front of the uh, printer. The exception, of course, is the uh, power supply it has an external cord that plugs in. Wasn't crazy about this. Well, I don't want to say it wasn't crazy, but I didn't understand the design choice. I would have figured they would have, would have wanted to attach it to the actual printer itself, but I'm not sure if they ran out of room or not, but I'll tell you, now that I've had this thing going, I like this because as it is now, it doesn't take up a huge amount of desk space, or if I put it on the desk behind me, uh, it's, it's pretty easy to make this fit with my other equipment and in other locations where uh, generally the other printers I've had take up a lot of space. Something that's kind of cool, and it's just a little thing, it's the aluminum bed clips. Uh, they're rectangular, and uh, there's not much to these things, but why more people don't have these, I don't know. Uh, essentially, they, uh, uh, they clip onto the, uh, between the heated bed and the uh, glass uh, bed surface, and uh, at the bottom there is a M3 screw that you tighten up, and voila, no more binder clips. You have now secured your bed securely using those provided uh, four uh, clips to attach your glass bed to the bed. Very slick. Something I haven't seen other printers do, this has an expansion card at the end of the X gantry, so it goes up and down with the gantry. And what this has is plug-ins for a proximity sensor and the BL touch sensor. 
and it makes the addition of a auto bed leveling probe really simple. Uh, the nice thing is, is that rather than wiring directly into the control box and dealing with that hornet's nest of wires and what have you, uh, you just plug it in here and you're good to go. There's some um, excellent directions on how to make this work in the Facebook group, uh, and they get some videos out there as well too, and uh, I'll go into that into a little more depth a little bit later. The assembly. Well, like most of these printers when they show up, they're very well packed. Uh, what I didn't expect with this one is that the extruder comes loose. Um, it it's, was basically in there with a half screw of the, of the uh, screw. So when I unpackaged that, that kind of came flying out at me. That was interesting. The other thing is that the, uh, the hot end assembly, everything here, this is basically bolted in with two screws. Uh, so that is kind of hanging loose as well too. Um, the build wasn't too, too bad. I relied heavily on the printed documentation that came with it. And I found that that was a little vague in some areas. I mean, I've put together a lot of printers, but there are a few areas where you have multiple screws and you're not sure which size to use where. So I've given a lot of feedback to Arion and let them know that, hey, you know, if you make a few tweaks in the guide, this will take a lot of the guesswork out of getting this printer together. Uh, for me, some of the guesswork was getting the extruder together uh, because again, different size screws, uh, and then which way to get the uh, stepper motor, which way to attach it um, so that everything plugs in properly. Uh, in this case, for example, the extruder motor, the wire, you wanna have it pointed this way so that the cabling uh, will reach everything. So little things like that would have been better. The YouTube video they have showing the assembly is excellent. So my advice is if you do purchase a printer like this and if you want to educate yourself ahead of time, uh, certainly check out their uh, video that shows you know, how to put it all together. And I'm sure there are others out there from other owners and that will take almost all the guesswork out completely. On the included SD card, it's really kind of interesting because they included not only you know the sample G codes that you would print, but they also have the manual and they also have a folder for profiles. So they have a simplified 3D and a Cura profile ready to go. And I found that as a member of their Facebook group, there's a tremendous amount of information passing around over there. Uh, I used one of the profiles that were, was provided for Simplify 3D and for my printing, that thing worked fantastic. Of course, before you print, you have to level the bed. And I did find with this printer, and as I did with my CR10S's, uh, you know, when you're doing the manual of bed leveling, you know, when you do each edge, no problem. But when it came to the middle, I was off a little bit. Now, of course, the, the workaround for that is when you first start that first layer, you know, crank those dials on the outside and, and bring the center up. But it would have been even nicer, uh, you know, of course, if we had a perfectly flat surface. The uh, bed surface isn't bad. Um, the next model printer that they sell is a Thinker S, and essentially that just has a spring steel PEI uh, bed uh, in place of the uh, glass. Um, of course, you can get those aftermarket, you know, Easy Plate or Wham Bam or, or various other vendors if you do decide to get rid of this glass and go to a spring steel solution. But uh, yeah, the bed leveling was a little wonky, and that really prompted me to jump into the BL Touch and uh, that worked very, very well. I, I had no issues. Once I had my offsets, it's been perfectly fine ever since. If you do get everything leveled and you're all set to go, just be wary that the first test print that comes off the printer is not small, it's fairly good sized, and it's at 0.1, so it's gonna take about three hours to print. And <laughs> so if you're standing by and eagerly watching your brand new machine do a test print, it's gonna be doing it for a while. And as I discovered with my first test print, uh, the X and the Y belts were a little on the loose side. And I believe that might be on purpose. I suspect that's maybe so that they don't develop flat spots while they're waiting to be shipped. And uh, it's pretty easy to uh, fix this. Of course, you just loosen this up on the X gantry, tighten it, uh, or tighten the belt rather than, you know, then tighten the screws in to take that. Um, the uh, Y, same story, right there in the uh, front. Uh, you just loosen that guy tighten it up and then secure everything back in place. Really easy peasy, but just one of those things to be aware of. And of course, when you do get your printer, make sure you check your power supply, make sure you have that clipped over to 115 volts if you're here in the United States. Uh, if your local uh, power is 220, you'll be fine. So just make sure, you make sure you check that and double check it. Onto the more advanced stuff. So as you can see, mine has a BL touch. 
There is a Facebook um, post in the uh, Arion group where, and I'll be happy to link that in the description, that walks you through exactly what mount to print uh, and then you know how to get that wired up and plugged into the BL Touch for the expansion card. Uh, and then of course, updating the firmware. The, of course, the next step beyond that would be once you get that all done, you need to do your Z offset and 3D Maker Noob has a fantastic video uh, that walks you through that process. But getting the BL Touch to work with this, getting the new firmware installed, uh, that post, which again, I'll, I'll link down below, uh, made this really easy to get this up and running and using the BL Touch and using the uh, bilinear bed leveling uh, to accommodate for that little spot in the center that's uh, a little bit of a dip, but it's worked really well. So let's talk about some of the interesting things that this printer has that I, that would be fun to share. So first of all, on the very front of these rails, uh, they have measurements. And at first, when I first received the printer, I was like, well, what would you use that for? To calculate how tall your print is? No, this is an interesting way to make sure your gantry is level, making sure that wherever this guy is matches up with this guy. So at first I thought that was kind of novel and okay, maybe I will, maybe I won't use that, but it's so, it's very convenient. So uh, I find I like that. The other thing that's kind of interesting is that they don't use any eccentric nuts. So that essentially um, all the wheels here, um, <laughs> as they're set is, is how they will be. Um, my concern is that as these wheels start to wear a little bit, you know, you might want to tighten them up or add a little bit more friction, but uh, there are no eccentric nuts as I look around um, that you can adjust. Um, I'm curious about that design decision, um, a little unusual, but uh, so far I haven't seen uh, any situations where that has been a problem. And so far, uh, these guys move a little bit as I go up the rail, but I, I, I'd still like to have the eccentric nut uh, just so I can make those fine tuning adjustments, of course, as the printer you know wears in. Couple things, let's see, the uh, the hot end, don't take this the wrong way, it's nothing special. I mean, it's it does have a neat little feature where it has a chamfer design, which means that when the filament comes in, rather than going up, it gets a straight edge, it's been widened out and chamfered so that the filament will go in smoothly. The extruder is just like you've seen on every other CR10, GTAC, what have you. Uh, what's interesting, what they did on theirs is they added where the filament goes in, there's a push-on connector and there's a section of uh, PTFE tubing so that when your filament is coming down through here, it's not gonna be making contact with the lead screw. What it does is it makes sure that your filament will go in and not be harassed by the lead screw. So that's, that's, a, that's a nice right there. Another thing this has, this has dual bed rails. That's where the wheels are riding on that side and this side. And so far I've had no issues with that and it's been very smooth. Unlike my CR10s, I've had to you know, tighten them up every now and then because they ride on the center. But this setup has worked out quite well. Okay, so I said it'd be a short video, just kind of a rundown, uh, some of the unboxing and such. The, uh, let's talk about the pros and the cons. So the pros, it was very well packed. It's, um, the guide wasn't terrible, it could be better, uh, but getting it together wasn't too terrible. Uh, the pros are definitely the price. I mean, $429, that's like 150, 160 bucks cheaper than a CR10 uh, version two, which is basically the same print dimensions. The Trinamic 2208 drivers, this thing is silent. Um, I mean, <laughs> when this thing goes to start a print, you know, with all my other loud printers, uh, I usually don't notice. The, uh, the ability to quickly add the BL touch uh, is quite good. Uh, the mount that they provide basically goes into two unused holes in the side of the hot end. The holes are not threaded, so I'm hoping in future versions they will thread that to an M3 screw or something. Uh, I wound up using a, a, a tap you know, to widen and thread that so that the screws that I had on hand uh, would fit in there securely, but uh, it'd be a, a nice little perk if they, uh, they tweak that. Uh, the hot end and the extruder, you know, it's, it's kind of the generic, you know, what you'd expect to see on a printer like this. Uh, again, you know, that BL touch is a really nice touch. The print surface, uh, you know, we always wish for better, but it's not terrible. Once you put a probe on there, if you happen to have one that has a dip in the center, um, it's pretty easy to fix. Um, I've been keeping track if my gantry gets out of sync, you know, between the two lead screws, and so far it hasn't been an issue. But it is really nice to have this thing here as a quick reference to find out, you know, am I in or am I out? 
Okay, let me wrap this all up here, kind of a the pro and the cons here. Uh, real quick, I don't see any cons. You know, the only things that, I, the only gotchas that I had was the documentation was a little vague when assembling it and putting it together. Those weren't big deals. Um, once I got that all figured out and the support from the Facebook group as far as you know, other Simplify 3D profiles I could try out, the firmware that I used to upgrade mine, how to do the upgrade, how to change out the pins because you do have to make some changes to your BL Touch pins, uh, the order they're in. Um, I mean, everything I've done to this thing has been you know, less than an hour to do. Firmware, boom, done. BL Touch, that's all set. And then, you know, outside of doing the Z offset and a bunch of test prints, it's been great. So what I'm going to do is, <laughs> I do recommend it. And what I'm gonna also say is, with, with that I say I'm gonna be doing a lot more printing, so I'll give this a more thorough review. But right now, for first thoughts, one week into it, I'm really happy with it. Also, be sure to check out my 3D printing forums. We could certainly use some more visitors. We'd love a good conversation. That website is www.3dprintingforum.us. As I wrap this up, I want to remind you, you can find me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website wherenerdyiscool.com. So be sure to frequent us on any or all of those places. All right, guys, that's my video for this time. I'm having fun with this printer. I'm gonna put it through its paces with some bigger prints and I'll be doing another video letting you know how it fares from doing those big prints. So thanks for watching. I remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Thanks for watching. Take care.